Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. We begin our video with a story about the craziest employee possible. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Coworker I barely know asks to borrow my car and throws a fit when I say no. I work at a grocery store as a cashier, and whenever we hire a new cashier, I always end up training them. One day, my manager introduces me to a new hire and tells me I'll be training her. She takes over the register while I watch. Even though she's really slow, which is to be expected at first, but she was slower than anybody I'd ever seen, she isn't making any mistakes. After a while, the afternoon rush slows down, we don't have any customers for a while, so I help her straighten up her lane. As we do so, she starts asking me all sorts of questions. And this is where it gets interesting. CW is coworker. CW, have you worked here very long? Me, not very long, but I have prior experience, so they have me train people since a lot of the older ladies don't like to. Oh, nice. Do you have a car? At this point, I was really confused because the question came out of nowhere. Yeah, why? Just wondering, what kind is it? It's a 2014 Nissan Sentra. I don't have my license yet because I don't have a car to take the test in. Can I borrow yours? I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable with that. Why not? I need to get my license so I can get a car. I don't see why you're being so rude right now. Well, first of all, I don't know you. Why would I loan my car to a complete stranger? Secondly, I'm very protective of my car. I bought it with my own money and don't let anybody drive it except me. Uh, I'm not going to wreck it or anything. I just need to borrow it so I can take my test. Come on, I'm a college student and I need to be able to get around. My family lives three hours away and I have to walk everywhere. Again, I don't feel comfortable letting a complete stranger borrow my car. Maybe you could just ask one of your friends. I did, but all my friends' cars are a lot older and not nearly as nice as yours. What does it matter how old or nice they are? If you just need to take the test, then it should work just fine. I don't want to use theirs. I want to use yours. I told you I'm not going to lend you my car, so please just stop asking. Just let me use it. Are you serious right now? It's my car, and I said no. I paid for it, and therefore I get to decide who drives it. At this point, my manager comes up to see what all the yelling's about. I tell him what happened, and he pulls CW into his office. Apparently, she got a warning, but ended up getting fired a few weeks later because she kept failing to show up for work and didn't even bother calling in. And our last story. I want the one in the picture, damn it! Glossary of jargon. Spiff. Arbitrary cash bonuses offered at management discretion. Pencil. Preliminary buyer's order used in negotiation. It delineates list price, discount, purchase price, trade value slash payoff, and taxes and fees. CPO. Certified pre-owned. If qualified by age, mileage, ownership, it gets a much more thorough inspection and earns an extended warranty for passing. This happened about five years ago when I was selling cars. On a Saturday, just before lunch, the dealership catered lunch on Saturday, but I didn't get to eat it, I sold a car to my first customer of the day, which any car guy will tell you, if you can get one out before 11 on a Saturday, you should almost be mad if you don't get a hat trick. Three sold in a day. Typically, hat tricks pay out an extra bonus. At my store, it was 150 bucks. I'd already gotten some free money in the morning meeting for a couple perfect surveys, and my sale was the first one of the day for the store, which happened to be a spiff that day, so I'm riding high having already put $500 in my pocket before noon with a real shot at doubling it before they turned out the lights. It's going to be a good day, I thought. I just finished stocking in my fresh trade and collecting my first sale spiff when the receptionist comes to my desk. Hey, OP, you're really good with weird, angry, and weirdly angry customers, yeah? Wonderful. Me. Yeah, I guess that's me. What have we got? R. That couple over there looks like it's taken too long for that guy at Jimmy John's to make their sandwiches. <sighs> I put a sunny customer service face on and greet the couple. They're aloof and condescending as I bring them to an empty desk. My desk was on the used side and offer coffee. They scoff and decline until they see the big fancy cappuccino machine. The wife looks at me expectantly as I sit down, inviting her to help herself, reassuring her that it's a very intuitive machine with several options, but I'll be happy to help if she has any problems. Hubby, CB1 for dialogue, hands me a folder, 
Inside is a printout from our website. I'd like to purchase this truck, please, at the advertised price, he says. I say, excellent. Before we discuss rebates, let me double check that we still have the vehicle in stock. It'll only take a minute. You don't know your own inventory? This is very unprofessional. Hey, honey, he says he probably doesn't have it in stock. Looks like we might have come all the way down here for nothing. This would never happen at Volvo. This is going to be fun. I mindlessly apologize, explain that we have 18 salespeople and over 650 cars on the lot at any given time. We sell 250 a month, so inventory management is literally a full-time job as I check the key track, see the key is checked in, and politely excuse myself to pull the truck around. In retrospect, I wish I would have paid more attention to the listing as it would have saved some pain, but I just pulled the stock number, verified availability, and pulled it around. Me. All right, let's take a look. They follow me outside and I start my walk around. CB1, this is the wrong truck. CB2, this is the wrong truck. I told you you were asking for trouble trying to buy domestic. I told you, honey, a damn Volvo won't pull a camper. This is what we need. Me. What do you mean? This is the truck from the listing you gave me. Christ. No, it's not. The listing I gave you was for a white long bed King Ranch. This is a silver XLT. I get that reading's hard. You'd think that even a domestic car salesman would know his colors. First of all, there's no such thing as a 30K King Ranch, and you clearly know that. Second, I don't appreciate being insulted. Clearly, there's been a mistake. Let's go back inside and figure it out. You have to honor your advertised price. It's the law. My wife's a lawyer. I'm a lawyer, and I'll eat you alive. Look, there's no need to get hostile. I don't get paid unless you buy, so it's in my interest to work this out. I assume our web developer made a mistake with the pictures, but let me investigate and we'll go from there. As I suspected, every word of text on the listing pointed to an XLT, as did the window sticker link. The web guy mixed up the pictures. I found the pictured truck, which had a sticker more than 20K higher, with a few rebates. I printed both stickers and the fine print disclaimer at the bottom of every listing and spent 20 minutes explaining, trying to talk sense, and fielding a myriad of threats and insults. Things have gotten nasty, and I was ready to fire them, but when I went to grab the stickers, the last thing I heard from the desk was, don't you dare cut these a-holes loose. Sell them a truck. I take it straight to the GM at this point, who comes out, takes one look at these people, decides it's not worth it, and personally delivers a pencil showing a real money 6K loss with the invoice to back it up. We're still like 17K apart, and they're holding ground, still threatening litigation despite knowing that they have no leg to stand on, and knowing that they were already stealing the truck they wanted at the offered price. Our store was part of the third largest group in the world at the time, so we had lawyers too. We happened to have the exact truck they were trying to buy on the used lot, one model year older, 21K-ish miles, CPO, listed at $36,999. I flipped them to that one, and we moved to the used side. I show them the truck. The hubby is failing miserably at hiding his excitement by the end of the test drive, my GM had told me to call him before I presented a pencil, so I did. To my chagrin, he cut the nuts off it and had me present $32,999, about 1K north of rough trade via NADA, and 2.5K south of the next cheapest similar truck within 300 miles. Plus, it was certified, which adds about 2K of value and warranty. They're still fixated on 30K. And here we pick up the conversation. I don't care what the market says. I want to know what you paid for it, and then we'll negotiate an offset from there. No, that's not something you get to know. You don't demand to know cost on anything else you buy. You could literally go to CarMax tomorrow and turn a small profit at our price, even if you weren't stealing this truck, and you absolutely are. My time isn't free. I, we don't give a F about you. We want a great price, and we're not there yet. Do better. You absolutely are at a great price, and given the abuse I've endured, you're out of your mind if you think I'm going to budge one cent off my price. I have a baby at home. I know this next comment is going to sound embellished, but I swear to Jesus it's verbatim. I could care less if your baby lives or dies. Take a thousand off or... Me holding back rage. We're done here. What? You heard me. We're done. Get the F out of my office now. No, I'm buying a truck. No, you're effing not. I've been patient as F and you crossed the line. Get the F out of here right now before I lose my effing crap. Can't pick up now. They stood up and I half heard it, half showed them out of my regular office and out of the building. I immediately got lit up by the desk managers and I let them speak their piece. Then I told them what was said. 
and suddenly we were a united front. I was shaking I was so angry, so I was given a shot of desk whiskey and told to remain in the tower until the whiskey worked and I'd calm down. I was hot, so it took a good while. I was still there when CB1 called about 20 minutes later to complain about how he was treated and he caught an earful from my manager. He still wanted the truck and my manager still wanted to sell it, so he put the guy on hold and asked me, I've got to sell the truck. What do you want me to do? I'll do the paperwork if you want, but you're still going to have to deliver. Nah, that's all right. Just tell him his price expired when he got himself tossed. And there'll be no negotiations when he comes back. If he wants the truck, he'll pay what we ask. Don't tell him the price and mark it up 2500 bucks. He laughed, nodded, and set it up. I got the deal jacket ready, brushed off his feigned apology, and made him fill out the credit app in silence before I showed him the buyer's order. This is way higher than it was before. Yes, sir, it is. Sign here. Why? A-hole tax. Sign or go home. He glared at me. I stared into his eyes and didn't say a word for a good 30 seconds. Then he picked up the pen and signed. I remained cold and professional through delivery and managed to treat him like any other customer I didn't particularly like with my sold follow-up. He remained an a-hole every time I spoke with him, but he ended up inadvertently being my biggest source of referrals. Evidently, he told everyone he knew about me charging him an a-hole tax, and he was such a notorious a-hole that it made his circle want to buy from me. Over the next year, I sold seven cars to people he knew. If anyone's interested, I did make my hat trick that day, but it didn't come until shortly after close. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.